This is Real Life with Deb Waterbury, a real show for real people with real issues. And now, here's your host, Dr. Deb Waterbury. Welcome to this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. I'm here this week with Dee Dwight. Hi. Hey, Dee. So we're still going on in our belief series, in our believe series, mm-hmm. and so we've had believe in ourselves. ourselves. Last week you and Karen did. Belief in God. And then we're getting to the tough stuff. Yeah, so the <laughs> last two, I felt like we needed to kind of move to belief in the external, and then next week we're gonna end in the belief to the internal. So this week we're gonna talk, next week of the internal, we're gonna end with believing in your purpose, which I oh, think that's is, good. is really a big deal for all of us, understanding uh, so what our fun gifts one, are. Yes. leave me the hard stuff. Uh, I know, you, <laughs> this one, however, is believing in others. Oh. And I, I feel like believing others is a hard one because people just hurt us all the time and they disappoint us all the time and so putting yourself out there in that vulnerable right. place of saying I'm going to believe in other people right is is we wonder if that's biblical necessarily because it does set yourself yourself up for hurt a lot of times right and we are supposed to have all of our you know we talked about the love belief others. in self yes <laughs> but a belief in self and then and believe in others cannot preclude belief in God. So we understand that. And right. so I want to I want to lay that groundwork first that we're not going to speak of this in terms of putting other people before God. We, oh, absolutely not. We know that that can't occur. But what I want to talk about specifically today is is first off what the Bible says about believing in others and how we can get to the place where you do believe in someone. But that there's a difference be- between believing in someone and then trusting. Trusting, them. yeah, kind of. You know, because you can you can believe that. I can believe you can do it, Deb. Yes, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna trust you. Exactly. You and and there's a and I you know I want to make sure we disseminate between the two, mm-hmm. because we so many people have allowed themselves, I think, to be taken advantage of and to be hurt over and over, over and over repeatedly. again because you either are not being wise enough to discern one of the scriptures I'm gonna to talk to you about right now, which is testing a person mm-hmm. to see whether or not they, they're, they're deserving of your belief. Right. And that the other thing is that you are mixing up believing in the potential of a person. Versus trusting them. Versus trusting them with you, your heart, your home, your children, whatever. Right. That there are, those are two different things we've talked about in, se- in sessions before about boundaries. Right, oh And this man. is one of those places Flashback. where, yes, <laughs> where you really and truly have to set up an if you haven't seen that episode, I, I encourage you to go down through, you can just look down underneath here and the scroll down to see those episodes on boundaries. Boundaries. Because there are, it is really biblical and smart to yep. set up appropriate, healthy boundaries. Even confronting people. Yes. Watch that episode. That one too, yes. <laughs> because there is, a, it, it's a it's a really weird tightrope that we walk in dealing uh-huh. with relationships with between flawed creatures. Because you know, we all are. People are going to hurt flawed, you. We're yes. all a mess. And you're going to hurt people. So there needs to be boundaries. There needs to be confrontation. There needs to be all this stuff in relationship. We have a relationship series as well. Man. I know we've covered so many things. But in terms of that, then, I need you to see at the very onset of the difference between believing in the potential of a person, believing in what God is going to do in that life, believing in the people as opposed to trusting, trusting them. them. And then how do you get to that belief? <sighs> and that, so let me just first, I want to read one scripture to you. It's 2 Corinthians 8.22. And what, what Paul's writing to the Corinthians here is about how they can see false teachers in their church. Oh, and good so, example. Yes, and so what he says here, he says, and with them, he's talking about now, he's talking about seeing false teachers, so he's telling them, I'm sending you some people that are going to kind of help you with this. And so what he does is give us the basis by which he trusts and believes in these people, which is the what we should emulate. In 8.22 of 2 Corinthians, he says, And with them, these people he's sending, we are sending our brother whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters. Mm. Now, if Paul understands that the way to get to believing in a person and trusting them is to test them Mm -hmm. in many matters, then, then I, understand, I think that's something we should emulate. And that doesn't mean that, you know, every, every relationship has this, you know, you got to put them through the test. No. But you, d- you should be careful before you put your belief in a person that they have shown you that they are worth believing in. And that's for, true for a lot of things. Just like yes. over and over. Someone says they're going to do something, they show up. Or the exact opposite. Very good. They're late every time. They cancel our appointments. They, you know, they're never where they say they're going to. Just 
that's how you can test someone. Oh, wow, I know what their track record is. It's been really amazing. Or, right. uh, not so much. Right. So or, there you've tested them. Yes, or test testing their authenticity right. in terms of what they say and what they actually do. Yeah. And, you know, you can do that in the workplace. You can do it on mommy, Mommy's Day Out. You can do it at mm -hmm. school, whatever. You, you can see if a person touts a whole lot of Christianity, I'll do, yeah. and, but then they don't behave in that way or they say we'll do a whole bunch of things and they the Bible says let your yes be yes your no be no and are they walking the walk and talking the yes talk? and so that you want to test that and that's biblical Paul mm -hmm. did that I mean Peter did that David did that this is what we're supposed to do yes some other scriptures I see about believing in others is second Corinthians just one chapter over in verse 7 chapter 7 verse 16 and Paul's writing, he says, um, I rejoice because I have perfect confidence in you. So who does he believe in here? The, He's believing them. in the church. He's believing in the Corinthian church. Yeah. Um, he has perfect confidence in them, but based on what? I mean, what do you think he's... Well, I'm thinking back about how Paul writes letters to the churches. A lot of times he's writing them the letters because bad stuff has happened or right. they haven't done something well. Right. And now he said, here, this is my advice for you. They took the advice. They acted upon it. I think about like kids. I have confidence in you because you fell last time. I taught you how to do it right. And now you're doing it right. And that is exactly what's happening here. Take the training wheels off. Yes, because he, <laughs> this is the second letter to the Corinthians. He wrote the first letter to the Corinthians. And if you read that letter, it is pretty harsh. Yes. He's pretty much saying, I'm going to come see you. And when I come see you, I better not see you doing what I've been hearing you've been doing. Mm -hmm. So he calls them out on a whole bunch of stuff. Right. The second letter, which is the one we're writing here, he's writing here and that we're reading. He's saying, I see now that you have moved in this right. and now I have perfect confidence. He tested them. Yep. They were failing. And now he sees that they, and so it's, it's appropriate to have confidence in people. It's like, Getting second chances. Mm -hmm. Wow, are we not a generation of people that want to give or we expect them, <laughs> yes. but boy, we are not. And so he is giving that perfect example. Absolutely. Is you didn't do too hot the first time, let's try it again. Yes, yes. And now that you've done it again, I believe in you. Yes, and there is a great power in that, not mm -hmm. only for you, but for the people that you're saying you believe in. Wow. Because if you can say that you believe in someone, you don't even have to say those words. Right. I mean, you know, you think about your they children. They give you the opportunity again. Yes, think about your children. All you have to do is look at them, especially if you have boys, <laughs> and tell them, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I respect every decision that you've made here. Yeah. My goodness. I mean, as a mother of boys, I know when I use that word respect, wow. even when they were five or six or seven, they understand that was something they received and they took that as belief. My mom believes in me. And what happens when you know someone believes in you, it changes. you want to continue in that. And so you have the power to help your brothers and sisters by b giving them the opportunity yep. and then allowing yourself to believe in them. Just a couple other scriptures in Jeremiah 17, five, thus says the Lord, and this is, I think a warning about keeping this balanced. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. So got to make sure that you keep these balanced always, trusting in yourself, trusting in others. All that stuff has to be balanced in terms right. of God being first. And then finally, Philippians 3, 3, for we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Okay, so what does that say to you about believing in other people? Well, I can't, back to last week, we have to first trust in God. Yes. And then it's almost like, Lord, why are you trusting me with that person? Yes. What do you want me to learn from this relationship? Right. I know people are gonna hurt us, all that kind of stuff. I know that this person can do right. Yes. But. I'm going just, to just the but. Yes, There's exactly. just always a but. You know, one of the things I, I learned when I was teaching high school was that, you know, at every year I'd be five or six classes of 30 or 35 kids, uh, 18 year olds, and, you know, they're red dot. You can pretty much be guaranteed that one of them in the next first week is going to disappoint you. Yes. Um, if, if not many more of them. But what I had to learn in the 18 years that I taught was, was that to begin every year knowing that of those kids, those 18, 17, 18 year olds, all of them have, have the ability to be amazing. Yes. In their own realm. Yep. I mean, it might they might be amazing at different things, but they all have maybe not that, history. <laughs> yes, they all have that ability, and it, and I needed to see that even in the midst of their failures, and even in the midst of the times that they disappointed me or their parents or themselves. And what I tried to convey to them was no matter what they did individually, and I tried to spend time with each of them individually mm -hmm. at some point was that I believe you can. Yep. Now, I'm gonna tell you, sometimes I didn't. 
but those words and that that would spur that because you ha you really do have the ability with the people that you're with your friends your husband your your pastors your children uh, you have the ability as a believer to spur them on yep. to greatness in the kingdom you can do it yes <laughs> you and it's right that you do so you know that doesn't mean i would trust some of those 18 year olds i mean Ooh. obviously i would not have trusted most what a of good them good example <laughs> but i still believed in them yes this is a biblical premise and it is so powerful and i think we lose so much of our power as believers in the kingdom by putting self first and saying, but you might hurt me or you might disappoint me. I'll think about Jesus and Judas or Jesus yes. and Peter. Oh, how about that? If Jesus can do it, so can I. Yes. And he knew. We just hope that people don't hurt us. Or think that they will. Jesus <laughs> knew. That they would. That Peter was going to deny him and, Jesus, and Judas was going to betray him. Yes. And look at the whole Jewish nation. He knew they oh. were going to crucify him and he went anyway. I mean, that's, he came down anyway and became, you know, the lowest kind of flesh. Just, you know, study Jesus' life in terms of who he actually became. Right. I mean, he came to the, the worst country, Nazareth. Everybody hated Nazareth. He came to a family that had nothing. Mm -hmm. He absolutely was the lowest of the low and still did that knowing that the people he loved and was about to die for were going to kill him. But he still, still believed. Yes. He believes that he'll we'll come back to him, yes. even if it's one at a time. Well, what did he say? One by one. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Mm -mm -mm. Because he knew that you and I, and that there, was a, there would be a millions and billions and trillions of people that would come to know him yes. from that act. Yes. Um, so you're right. Jesus set the perfect example for us. We can't be Jesus, but no. we can certainly understand that example. Right. And, and, and understanding that people are going to disappoint you. Yep. You don't have to trust them but you do need to believe in them. And you should build toward trust and you should allow them the opportunity to build that trust, but still set some appropriate and healthy boundaries if yep. you've been hurt or if they've you know, disappointed you or done some things, but you still need to believe that God can do the impossible. Through them, with them, in them. Oh yes, he did it with you. He's gonna continue <laughs> doing it with you. I mean, Woo! goodness gracious, I know. <laughs> There's no way I'd be sitting here right now if he hadn't done it with me. Yes. So understanding that, that there is, a, there is great power in your hands by believing in those around you, even when they look like they're beyond help. Oh yeah, that's when they need you to believe in them the most. Yes, because who are you actually believing in right there? God, exactly. God, you, Lord, you change them. Lord, you work in their yes, lives. Yes, it's such a move of faith. Because I believe in God, I know that it's worth and that he is going to change them. Yes, that's mm. such a beautiful testimony to God's power yes. and your willingness to move in that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue praying for you in terms of this as we pray for ourselves. You know, and I, I want to encourage the mothers and the fathers who may be watching right now, do this for your children. Yeah. I cannot tell you how important it is that your children know and, and have full faith in that you believe in them, especially when they fail. They, and especially when they disappoint you. It, we have to go against our own human nature of, of wanting to hurt them or make them see how bad they've been or make them see it. Yeah. And yes, there has to be punishment. There needs to be Consequence. you know consequences. But the, at the end of the day, the power you have in your children's lives by just letting them know, I know you messed up, but I believe, believe you. that you are amazing. Mm -hmm. I just please I encourage you to do this for your children and don't wait until they're their teenagers do it now <laughs> they can they understand you when they're two and they'll listen and then they're <laughs> listening yes when they're teenagers they're pretty much not listening to you and you got a lot of makeup to do there so not that it's too late start right now if you haven't done it before but man if you got young ones at home believe them believe in them and let them know that God bless you we love you we'll see you next week Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. I hope it's been a blessing to you as much as it was to me. You know, if you want any of my books or information on articles or any of my speaking engagements, you can go to my website at debwaterbury.com. God bless you.